fouled out anyway. <laughs> anyway. It's just one of those things where the Austin Bulldog girls, they got some great quality. They just don't have a whole lot of depth. And you hate to get into foul trouble or injury situations, obviously. That's where you need the depth. But if, if you got good eight, eight good players, you can do a lot of good things. And uh, barring the things we just mentioned, hopefully that'll lead them to playoff success here. It's just going to be something about being uh, in the play on the playoff road. Yeah, uh, we we think there's a very good chance they'll be the top seed this coming be out the of team district. We're going to be following this year, among yeah. others, but hopefully this group for sure. Yeah, they are the favorite. So the Austin Bulldog girls, once you get into the playoffs, you know that um, it is going to be tough. You're going to be playing against teams that play aggressive defense at both ends of the floor. And and the other and thing about the Austin uh, Lady Dogs, they're not they're not a real tall team. They're they're they got a lot of girls who yeah, are I noticed similar, that. In si similar size. but On their heights, there's nobody right, whose height right. starts with six. Right. It all exactly. starts with five, and then there's an apostrophe, right. and then another number after that that's less than 12. We have the announcement of the players here. Um, let's listen into that. All right, so let me turn this up. Rendition, Roger. Oh wait, you gotta wait till I turn it back down before you talk again. Or we turn that up for the Star Spangled Banner. Okay, now go for it. Well, we're listening to the uh, introductions of the starting lineups here, and I'm not going to say much as we listen.
All right. You have heard the starting lineups, and here with the play-by-play -play for you is Patrick Kinnick. Welcome to Austin versus South Houston, and Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you, Roger. We were uh, we were just mentioning prior to the game <laughs> the difference in our temperature of the gym. Yesterday we were at Baytown Lee College freezing our you-know-what's off, looking for some gloves and hats and whatnot. It was a, Roger claims it was not above 60 in there. Um, today, it feels like it's about, what, 80 <laughs> Well, in here. <laughs> yeah, I think so, but I can handle that. At least I can move my hand. Yes. But when I was at Brazosport High School on Tuesday, it was yeah. even colder for yeah. boys' games involving Willow Ridge and Kempner. And some, some of you may have heard the story behind that. That might have to be repeated this afternoon. Roger was... Uh, commenting on how cold it was on Tuesday, you said, right? Tuesday? That's right. Here's the tip. A control by the Lady Dogs all the way in for an easy layup is Dixon. And just like that, within five seconds, the Dogs, Lady Dogs, have a 2 nothing lead, and they put that half-court, well, the full-court pressure. The South Houston uh, Lady Trojans break the press, but now it's stolen by Sturdivant. And a layup for Dixon again, and it's now four to nothing. Boy, oh boy, we're not going to be able to keep track of all this. It's Cone quickly. The Lady Trojans trying to weather the early pressure here. They break the press. Layup opportunity, no good. Rebound down to the Lady Trojans. Here's Gonzalez's shot from about 12 feet out, no good. Rebound down to Dixon. Uh, to Yusuf, I'm sorry, with the rebound. And now Sturdivant has it. Left side, Dixon. Looking down low for a post-up position for uh, DK. Now down low to Jackson, who throws up a wild shot as she's falling down. Rebound comes down, and it's tipped out of bounds off of the uh, South Houston team. Gonzalez had her hand on it last. Dixon... Gets the ball out on top. Sturdivant swinging around to the left side. Right side, I'm sorry. Three-point shot, no good. We had a whistle. Did you get that explanation, Roger? I didn't get that. No. Um, they stopped play. They usually, they, officials go over to the table and give a jersey number. but Something I happened there. It was that. no foul or anything. The Lady Dogs got the ball back. Here's Dixon in. Shot attempt, no good. Rebound down to to DK, back out to Dixon, rebound down to Jackson, no good, Sturdivant, up, no good, Jackson again, up, and no good, rebound down to Dixon, now there's a loose ball foul called on Dixon, or did they call it on, yeah, it's on Dixon, I didn't really see the foul, there's a little bit of contact in there, but I tell you what, the Lady Dogs, how many rebounds they get in that sequence, about six? I think it was half a dozen, <laughs> yes. And Jeez. it was a, a very gentle, subtle yeah, yeah, shove yeah, as a good player like Amina Dixon. <laughs> you know, the really good players right. figure out how to get away with exactly, stuff. Exactly, exactly. But she didn't that time. Yes, and there was a, f a foul called, so the score remains 4 nothing. Ramos has it for South Houston. Now I can't tell the number, 35, because her hair is too long. Soto. Had the ball stolen. Here comes Sturdivant. Passes it off to the right side, and that is DK with a layup. But that's the third layup of the afternoon for the Lady Dogs, and I have a feeling that's going to be the mantra here this afternoon. 6 nothing with just two minutes gone by. Sturdivant. Give and go. Back to Sturdivant. Beautiful pass from her teammate, DK. If She unfortunately missed the shot. DK gets the ball back. Nice pass to Jackson. Layup. Up and in. Holy mackerel, these girls are putting on a show out here early. It is a timeout now by South Houston. They had to stop the bleeding early. 8 nothing, Lady Dogs. Early on here, Roger, are we staying here? Or yeah, we'll we stay here? here for now. Okay. Um, by the way, just wanted to, let's see, a couple of things I wanted to point out. One was that we broadcasted two Ridgepoint boys games yesterday. Right. And in each of those games, they fell behind right. in a big way, especially right. in the first half. And when they played their second game of the day against the Bryan Vikings, they were down by 15 to nothing. 15 to nothing, yeah. And I'm just kind of 
Now, now I, Ridgepoint obviously had the capacity to come back because they did. They came from 17 Twice. points yeah. down in the morning yep. to beat Spring Westfield, and then they came from 15 points down at the very beginning to defeat Bryan. But I will tell you that Austin might equal or surpass that 15 nothing start, Yeah, I, and I, I uh, they're not going to lose the lead. I, I don't sense this comeback mentality or uh, potential from South Houston, unfortunately for them. Dixon from three-point land, thought about it, got it back to Sturdivant. Nice drive, gives it off to the right side to DK, who lays it in again, and their passing is very good. 10 nothing. the Lady Dogs, they, they pull off the press. Uh, it's, uh, they pulled off the press within three minutes of the ball game. Gonzalez has it for South Houston, being guarded by Sturdivant. Now it is Fields for South Houston, and the ball's being stolen down there in a corner by Dixon. Long pass to Jackson, who fumbled the, uh, the catch there and tried to save it from going out of bounds after the, the little mishap on her part, and she was able to save it, but it went out of bounds on the side in front of the South Houston bench. Uh, a rare mistake there for the Bulldogs. But they're going fast and furious here. 10 points here in the first, not even first half of the first quarter. It's hard to keep up with it all. Now Ramirez has it for South Houston, being guarded nicely by Dixon. Dixon, you can just see the determination in her face that she's not going to allow things to happen and ball still being dribbled it looked like a five second count we had a couple of those yesterday afternoon remember roger that were key plays and that one seemed like it was longer than five seconds as uh, dixon was playing tenacious defense yes and i i kind of i feel for uh sierra ramos because she was doing her best but uh tough defender on her here are the Bulldogs in the front court. Oh, a couple of steps there by Dixon, and she knew it. She had her eye on the basket on a drive, but her feet were a little bit quicker than her ball control there and forced a turnover for herself. Sierra Ramirez has it again. Sturdivant on her. Sturdivant has a lot of size on her. Dixon steals it left side. She's going to go all the way to the left side and lay it in, and that is her third layup of the half and Rogers prediction of 15 to nothing it's already 12 nothing as Dick Enberg would say it's an immediate jeopardy <laughs> Here's actually the uh, the Ridge Point uh, record for falling behind at the beginning of a game is in immediate jeopardy yeah you're right South Houston uh, nice little move there by uh, I believe that was Gillen Gillen Guillen. Like Ozzy Guillen. She, you remember the former foul-mouthed manager of the Chicago White Sox. Yeah. You have you to, remember him, don't I you? I do remember him, yes. But a nice move by Guillen there. Karina, she was unable to make the shot, but it was a, a pretty little pirouettic spin move. Nice pass inbounds to number one, Tally, but they call the five-second call. How many times you see that, Roger? The ball is in the air, and the whistle blows. <laughs> it seemed like the ball often. <laughs> seemed like the ball was in the air when they when he called the five-second call, but uh, it was a pretty good defense by the Bulldogs. They forced a turnover, Sturdivant, right side, back to Dixon, top of the key, swings it around as uh, Yusuf has it. Now Sturdivant, baseline, left side, nice penetration. She's upset with herself for not making the shot, but she was fouled, and I think she's going to go to the line for two. And Sturdivant, wow, what an impact player. She came in last year as a freshman. Although it sounds weird when you're talking about girls, it should... Fresh woman. Fresh woman. But yeah, uh, it was she was a, a ninth grader. And she, just uh, it's hard to believe she's a sophomore. She just, she's got good size, and she can just see the confidence that she has in her game. All of these Bulldogs out here right now, you've got a lot of confidence in them. So look, I don't think she hit the, the rim on either of those free throws either. She drilled both free throws, and here it is, 14-0. And South Houston looking for their first bucket. All the way to the left side. Shot attempt from Guillen is uh, long. Rebound comes down to the Bulldogs. Dixon right side. Yusuf back to Dixon. Good, good pass on a little give and go situation to uh, DK. She missed a shot, unfortunately. South Houston comes down with it. Here's Tally for South Houston. They finally get it off to Guillen. Actually, that's not Guillen, that's Soto. 
Yeah, she has so much hair on her. You can't tell. Yeah, you know, coming down on the back of her jersey, it's two, hard to see. Two of the girls for South Houston have the hair going beyond their their uh, jersey numbers as Sturdivant makes the steal, but fouled in the back quarter. Otherwise, it would have been a layup. So maybe a good foul there, but it is fourteen to nothing, Roger. Well, Do you have the list of items that we can debate or talk about here too today. Here's a long three-pointer. I don't think she hit the rim on that either. That's Sturdivant. And she has five all of a sudden and it's 17-0. And that 15-0 game yesterday was in jeopardy and it is now 17-0. I wonder what it'll go to before South Houston will get some points here. I'm concerned. I really don't like to see any team no, get really buried under a mountain I, I of points. I don't either, and I'm sure Coach Dickerson has some sort of a uh, game plan under the circumstance. But it's hard. When you only have eight players, you don't have – you got a lot of quality players coming in. Out to Sturdivant again for three. Look at that. Another three. But Patrick, wow. I, I have to criticize to when it's I criticize when it's warranted. She grazed the rim. Oh, on she that did. One. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <The laughs> Got to find actually. something. And there's a steal from Sturdivant. Just nice, clean steal. And that time she did not hit the rim off the backboard and in. And all of a sudden she has ten points, like within the last two minutes. As Billy Joel once famously sang, "She's so good with her stiletto, you won't even see the the blade." <laughs> Although a, a stiletto oh. is a heel, not a knife. Okay, just to be clear, just to be clear, nice drive in there, almost made the basket. That was uh, Gillian, Gian. I'm sorry, she missed the shot, but she had a couple of nice moves here early on, and she's un unable to connect on the shot, unfortunately for her. We have a somebody checking in. Yusuf checks out and trying to see who that is. It who checked in for the well, Lady Dogs. Well, they only dogs. got three subs, so it's it has got to be Thatch, I Madison think. Madison Thatch. Yeah, she's checked in, and she's one of the uh, Bulldogs, one of the only Bulldogs who has her hair covering her number. And a nice save, but saved right to the South Houston player who shot the shot from the corner and missed. That was Ramos. Here's Sturdivant with a beautiful pass to... DK, what a pass. Left-handed, and she just shot it across the lane to DK, who was on the left block, who laid it in. 24-0. South Houston has run into the proverbial buzzsaw here today. A rebound off the miss as, let's see, um, that's another Bulldog in there. That's uh, Hamlin... Hamlin Segura. Kata, Kata Hamlin Segura. Her full Segura. name is Catalina, but everybody calls her Kata. Kata. To save time. You know, saving right, two syllables every time Kata. you say her name. Here's an inbound pass that looked pretty good for a moment, and then Dixon def deflected it away. It's 42 seconds to play here in the quarter, and it's all Lady Bulldogs, 24 nothing. Roger had mentioned they have a 20-1 and one record. Here's a nice inbound pass. Layup attempt, no good. Got the, got her own rebound and laid it in. That looked like, uh, was it, let's see, I think it was Gonzalez who did that. Here's a three-point attempt, no good. Sturdivant finally missed. Here come the Lady Trojans down the floor. And that was a gay gay who took it all the way down and got her shot blocked. And Sturdivant did commit the foul and she didn't argue one iota she knew that she was uh, guilty as charged she didn't need to argue i don't think uh, especially with a 24 to nil excuse me it's two now <laughs> yeah they scored i'm glad that i wanted to say nil you know so i uh, it was a soccer season and by the way one of the great athletes of all time passed away was it yesterday or the day before pele perhaps the greatest soccer player of all time huh Best known, yeah. I think. There was hey. a good free throw attempt is good. And she made a, one out of two. A gay gay gives her team three points now. 20 seconds to play here in the quarter. Dixon uh, had the pass deflected, but Sturdivant was able to corral it. Back to Dixon. Good movement by the Lady Dogs. A pass deflected from uh, DK, and it was 
picked off and taken down to floor layup missed though by a gay gay and that's the buzzer for the first quarter we've played one from the doghouse okay and uh, the elated bulldogs lead 24 to 3 roger patrick with our score 24 to 3 as you said uh what super bowl finished with a final score of 24 to 3 and for the longest time it was the only super bowl in which the losing team failed to score a touchdown 24 to 3 Boy, I should know this. Give me, uh, give me a little time frame. Well, earlier in the uh, game, the score of this one was 17 to nothing, and 17 and zero was the win-loss record of this particular oh. team the next year after so Miami they beat got drubbed. Miami, yes. that would be Super Bowl. I don't know. Um, Boy, six, seven. Super Bowl six. And uh, played an old Tulane Stadium. So Cowboys be beat the Dolphins twenty-four to three. Okay, that I do not remember that that game. I I just can't remember. But you know, even the Dolphins the following year, they did not exactly wallop the the Redskins. In no, their they didn't. They were season. lucky. The well, crossbar the of the goalpost, which in those days was on the goal line, right? Stopped a touchdown pass that might have made it fourteen to fourteen. And they might have gone into overtime. It was 14-7, the final score, right? 14-7 yeah, was the uh, final score. Yeah, that was the, the Gary Upremian uh, goofy, was it blocked? And then he came up with it and tried to throw it. And, <laughs> and number oh, yeah. one, Gary Upremian. The little uh, former <laughs> former tie salesman from Cyprus. That's what he did before he became. Are you serious? A, yes, uh, wow. in addition to playing some soccer. Of course, he had to have been a soccer player with that soccer style kicking. Here come the Lady Bulldogs now with a relaxing 21-point lead. Thatch has it, got it down to um, to Segura, who lost it out of bounds. And the South Houston Trojans come back with the ball. Gonzalez for South Houston, right-hand dribble. High post, has it to Fields. Fields off to the left side. A, let's see, that's Ramirez. Shot attempt, no good. Rebound comes down to Yusuf. Got it to DK. DK now off to Dixon. Excuse me, that's Yusuf. I'm sorry, that was Yusuf for three. And it's 27 to three. Gonzalez for South Houston. Lost the ball as Segura tied her up down there on the baseline area. Ball will be still to the Lady Trojans. And now several substitutions are about to come in for the Lady Trojans, but there's a timeout. 30 second timeout. So let's tell you about the scoring so far. Andrea Sturdivant has 10 for the Lady Dogs. Yusuf with three. Dixon has six, all layups. DK with six, he's got three layups as well, and India Jackson has two. Gives us a 27 to three game for the Lady Dogs trying to add to their 20 and one record. And sh flexing the muscle here in the doghouse, showing what kind of team they have here. South Houston will inbound the ball. It'll be Ray Ramus to inbound it. On the right side of their basket. Gets it to Gonzalez, who shoots the shot from the right side. It rolls around and out. Rebound down to Segura. And she gets it to Sturdivant. Up the floor. Right side, all the way to the basket. Lays it up, no good. She tried to save it after going out of bounds, and it was tipped to... Uh, Ramos to Soto now has it for South Houston top of the key Ramos looked like she traveled no call down to the right block shot attempt no good from Gonzalez Ramos has it and lays it in nice job by Ramos staying with it off the deflection and she lays it in it's 27 to 5 Sturdivant right side Yusuf directing traffic Segura now off to Thatch. Sturdivant. Yusuf for three. A little long. Rebound is fought for. Segura comes up with it for the dogs. 
the Lady Dogs. Nice pass to DK. Back out to Yusuf. Another three attempt. That one's short. And rebound comes down to Soto for South Houston. Long pass. A little bit too long, but saved. Gonzalez gets it back to Soto. Puts it up. No good. Rebound fought for. And DK for the Lady Dogs comes down with it. All the way down she goes. Left hand dribble. Crossover in the lane from about five feet. And she puts it in. Nice shot by DK. And now she has eight points in the first half. 29 to 5. Austin Lady Dogs on top. And a travel violation called against a gay gay. I've seen worse than that call. It seems like that one could have been let go, but I guess you got to call the game. Lots of substitutions coming in for I both don't teams. Watch, I don't watch a lot of NBA, but one thing that I have noticed when I see the occasional highlights is that it seems like when guys are, they have a part of their foot over the three point arc, they often shuffle and take about six steps to make sure they're behind the arc. Yep. And they never seem to get called for traveling. They never call that. Here's a long three from Yusuf again. This time off, of, off the rim. A rebound out of Soto. And she's going to maintain her dribble up the, to the front court. To Scott. Scott to the right side. Her pass goes off the shin of her teammate. She's able to pick it up and shoot the ball and almost made it. That was Bennett. And now Bennett almost steals it, but Yusuf able to get it back for the Lady Dogs. Then Bennett's hustling. Dixon got it to Jackson. Segura back to Dixon. Yusuf's going to try another three. That's about her fourth three in a row that she's missed, but she's going to keep on practicing. And that's all right. You got to get that shot down. Best time to practice is in the game, really. Game situations. Here's Soto inbounding it to Scott for South Houston. They are wearing black. They have the same color scheme, I think, as the Bulldogs do. Here's a shot attempt short. Rebound comes down to Bennett. Shot attempt short again, and this time Jackson comes down with it for the Lady Bulldogs. Thatch to Dixon. Excuse me, that's uh, Yusuf. Now Dixon has it. That's going to try for three. Off the rim, no good. Rebound comes down to Bennett. Bennett's uh, had a lot of activity as she's come in for South Houston. The ball's being fought for. Finally, Jackson comes up with it, and she's fouled on her shot attempt, and she'll go to the free throw line for two. You're right about that color scheme. Both teams are kind of like Texas Tech with the red and black. One thing that I, I just have to make uh, random observations, as you know, especially in a game where the margin is 24 points. Uh, Tiffany's about to shoot here. Good. Uh, you can sit in the stands here in the Austin gym, and you never have to worry about something falling through to the floor underneath the stands because they have wood that that covers the entire gap. It's well, very helpful. Yeah, I'm sure it helps the people who clean up. You might be able to drop a dime or a nickel in the little space there, but that's you're all. Not, you're not talking about a pass either, dropping a dime. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, she made both free throws to Jackson. And now the South Houston has the ball stolen away by Dixon, and there was a little hand fighting going on up the floor with a gay gay, and uh, she ended up fouling Dixon there as they were side by side, arm in arm, up the floor. Three and a half to play here in the first half. All Lady Dogs so far. They had a 20 to nothing lead before South Houston scored. Nice cut, nice pass. Jackson for a layup. Boy, I love their ball movement, Roger. They really move the ball well. By the way, I called India Jackson, Tiffany Jackson, and that's because I knew this uh, San Angelo Lakeview High School athlete. Her name was Tiffany Jackson way back when. I don't know why that stuck in my brain. Well, the shot attempt for South Houston come up short, and Jackson came out with it for the Lady Dogs. I think that's a, that's a long memory you got there, Roger. Indi speaking of long, India got away with traveling, yeah. <laughs> not all the way to India, but a long way <laughs> she before she passed the ball speaking off. Speaking of six steps, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's uh, Jackson with the ball uh, out past the three-point line. 
Segura, nice pass to Dixon who turns and shoots a shot off the bracket from about three feet out and she's a little bit frustrated with herself there but she's had a good game so far. Here's South Houston with the ball in the front court now. Ramirez, uh, excuse me, that was Fields. Pass off to the right side, a shot attempt is over the basket and out of bounds, save attempt made but uh, not made well as the Lady Dogs will get the ball back. With you know two, what, Patrick, two and a half to play here in the first half. This is my fault because I'm kind of the on-site producer. We haven't had any commercial breaks in the first half. Well, and, I was wondering about that. And uh, <laughs> I didn't you know, know if that I... in other levels of basketball, in college and pro, they have a media timeout every four minutes. Yeah. You ever notice that? Yeah, not not in this level. We need and, it. And you really have to fight hard to get the get the spots in. Jackson's calling for it on the right block. And there's a reason why she's calling for it, because she had good position. That was India Jackson. Okay, I see a little six degrees of separation here. You've got India Jackson. Yes. There is uh, an athlete who's in the volleyball program at Ridgepoint. Her name is India Kalu, and she's got a brother named D.K. Kalu. Wow, boy. And there is a player on the Austin girls varsity here whose last name is D.K., although it's not two letters right. like D.K. Kalu. Right. Well, that's – Roger, you're always – your wheels are always turning. We're all about Fort Bend here that's at right. FortBend.com. Her, her second free throw, meaning Jackson, was uh, long, and she missed both free throws, unfortunately, for her. 33-5, to five, though, is the scores. The Lady Dogs cruising here in the first half with two minutes to play and a travel violation against South Houston. And over on the far side, I see the – uh, the uh, Bulldog boys team is all suited up and they're probably going to be shooting some hoops at halftime, warming up for their game against the Randall, Randall. Lions who are here to our left. Here's the Lady Bull Bulldogs in the front court. Batch to the left side finds Sturdivant. Underlays on a shot. Rebound to Jackson who lays it in. She is a solid player down there. When she gets that ball, she knows what to do. Lays it in, it's 35 to five. And now the Lady Trojans trying to get back on the board. Here's Bennett, and she lost the ball on the right side. Jackson, although uh, unfortunately for the Bulldogs, she overthrew her teammate. By the way, uh, the ball went out, out you, of bounds. You know what it's like to uh, have kids who are, you know, Sam is your youngest and he's uh, just out of high school last year, graduated. And um, they, they seem to have different movies that they like, right? Do you remember the movie Atlantis? I do. Sturdivant has it off the steal to Dixon, and she was a, maybe a little bit too unselfish there. Tried to go back to Sturdivant. Might have been better just to shoot that shot, but when it's 35-5, to five, you do some things like that. Try to get your teammates involved. South Houston misses a shot. Jackson down with a rebound, and ooh, Thatch uh, lost sight of the sideline and stepped, stepped the right foot on the sideline out of bounds. Okay, do you remember the, uh, the voice of the character in the movie Atlantis, Thaddeus Thatch, was uh, Michael J. Fox. Oh, Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox yeah. did the voice uh, in that movie Here's a of the main character. Here's a steal on the inbound. Dixon's got it all the way up the floor, layup and in. Dixon, she started the game with about six... Points, three layups right off the bat. It was 10 to nothing within two minutes of this game. Now I'm having a hard time seeing as some ball players are standing up here. 35 seconds to play and a half. Passes a bit errant as the Ch Lady Trojan player Gonzalez was bumped a little bit and threw it out of bounds for the turnover. No foul call on it. 31 seconds to play. And I'm sure we'll get a, a few uh, spots in at halftime, right, right, Roger? We'll, we will, and, and we'll I hope that up. we can also maybe get an interview with the uh, Randall head boys basketball coach. As Roger, he can't hear me from here. He's trying to get his attention there. Here's a nice pass into Jackson, who lays it in. How are you doing? We're uh, we're talking to the. Yes, but not until halftime. Here's four seconds to play here in a half. 
Rodgers doing some negotiating here at the end of the half. Ball tied up with 1.1 to play here in the half. And yes, yes. And the Lady Dogs will have it with 1.1 to play. They already lead 39 to 5. It's almost halftime. The Randall boys team is uh, getting ready to go out and do some warming up at halftime as well. They're right in our corner. And Roger has negotiated a halftime interview. Well, I think that their head coach, Clark Eisenhower, is going to join us. But, Here's uh, the pass. The clock did not start on time. Sturdivant put it up. No good. But to, but no uh, worries because the Lady Dogs have a 39-5 to lead at halftime. We are now going to take a break and hear from our beloved sponsors. Yes, because we could not bring you these broadcasts without their their wonderful help and, and their loyalty. So we'll be right back, 39 to five, as Patrick said. It's a big lead for the Austin Bulldog girls over South Houston. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, Doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc? Doc? Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Enough. Wish I could have. I know, I know the feeling. <laughs> okay. By the way, um, I didn't want to interrupt what you were saying when we were in that commercial break, yes, but sir. every once in a while we have this commercial player and it just quits. Okay. And it just quit in the middle of a commercial spot. So Not a problem. We, we owe Xfinity one, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is Clark Eisenhower. He's the boys' head basketball coach at the brand new Randall High School. And it's fantastic to have you bringing your team in here to take on the Austin boys. And uh, first of all, tell everybody how you have a great history as an Austin Bulldog. Yes, sir. Well, this is my 20th year of coaching. And during my career, I spent six years here as an assistant coach at Fort Bend Austin High School. Had a lot of fun, a lot of growth here from 2005 to 2011. Was very happy to build the program up help it be successful and so I'm very happy to see where Coach O has the program right now and how they're continuing the tradition we started way back then. Well um, if you have been coaching for 20 years then you had to be around very early in the history of Austin High School because yes, it has not been I get let's see I think the way that Fort Bend ISD developed you had Dulles first then you had Willow Ridge then Clements then Kempner, and I think Austin might have been the fifth El school. Elkins was five. Elkins was five. Okay, yes, so yeah. Austin, Austin was number six. I went to Elkins when it first opened up. That's when I was in high school. So what years did you come to Austin, and uh, what were some of your athletic accomplishments? Uh, we came to Austin in 2005 all the way through 2011. and uh, It was a program that was in disarray at the time. They had not won a district game in two years when we got there. And we had to come in and completely change the culture and mentality and do that. And that was actually a lot of fun to do that, to build that. And that's actually the kind of stuff that helped me with the Randall job, where we had to come into a brand new school and build the culture, build the mentality from the ground up and get the kids to buy into working hard, to being part of a team, that culture of excellence we're trying to build. You know, it's very exciting to be a part of a brand new program. I mean, I'm familiar with that. I went to McCullough High School, which morphed into the Woodlands. Yes. You know, all I wanted to be when I was growing up was a Conroe Tiger. But then in seventh grade, I found out I'm not going to be a Conroe Tiger. There's going to be a new school. And can you talk about how the excitement at Randall manifests itself as people get to really put their stamp on something that is all fresh and new in a blank slate? And that, that's a huge thing right there. Getting to come into a new school with excitement. There are no traditions, so we were building it up. In fact, our slogan for this year is tradition starts here that we are the first ones doing this. This is our first varsity program. 
Like I told our kids, you had the first varsity win. You had the first varsity game. That's something that no one can ever take away from you. And in 50 years, 80 years, 100 years, I've been in some schools that have been around for a long time on my previous stops. You were that one that started everything. And that's something that's very special and something that's a privilege. And so we are excited about building that, seeing our kids come in and work and do that. And I think we have a great foundation built up for future success here. And you've got Iowa Colony is another brand new school. And we saw them playing uh, their boys team in tournament basketball yesterday in Baytown. I know they're very excited over there. And this is this job that you now have had to be one that was very much in demand. I know a lot of great candidates had to want this job. What do you think made the difference and, and ended up with them shaking your hand and saying welcome? You know, that's a challenge because I knew it was a, it was a great job. I had a very good job before. I was at Tomball High School, and I loved my time at Tomball. And I was not planning on leaving Tomball, but then this opportunity opened up, and there are certain jobs out there where you look at it and realize that place is special. And Randall High School is one of those places. And so the thing for me I think that really sold it was I had helped rebuild culture at Fort Ben Austin. I'd help rebuild the culture at DeCaney High School and take DeCaney to the playoffs for the first time ever. We went back to back to back, went to the regional tournament. I'd gone to Galena Park and taken a program that was in disarray on and off the court into a competitive program. And then I took Tomball to a team that was not picked to go to the playoffs, into the playoffs. I broke an 88-year-old school record with the most district wins in school history. And so every place I had been at, we had seen consistent growth from wherever we were to where we were trying to be. And I wanted to bring that same mentality into Randall High School. And so that's what I really sold myself on here was helping grow these boys, helping develop them, and build a complete program. We are at halftime of the girls game between Austin and South Houston. And the Bulldog girls lead at 39 to 5. And meanwhile, we got varsity players from the boys game that will follow, which we'll have for you here on VibeFortBend.com. And we're talking to Clark Eisenhower, the head coach of the boys basketball program at Randall High School. And um, <clears throat> I had another question in my head, and it just kind of flew out of there. You know, like uh, you hope the butterfly will stay there so you can take a picture of it, and then it just this yes, takes sir. off. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, uh, I, I'm now I know now I know as you're talking to me here I have I think I hear a little Cajun in your voice is actually, that correct and and uh, where's your dialect come from it's very unique I actually get that question a lot I get um, I'm actually from the Houston area I was born in Victoria but moved to Houston when I was six months old and lived here ever since went to college here worked here my whole life um, somehow I picked up this accent I went to college with a guy from Backwoods, Louisiana. We had a bunch of inner city guys, East Coast guys, and somehow this accent came out. So I don't know exactly where I got it from. Well, uh, let's see. Did you mention where you went to college? I went to the University of Houston. I went back when uh, Clyde Drexler was coaching the team, and I worked for him in the basketball program. was able to stay on after he left when Ray McCallum came in and worked with the program there for a few years. Well, that was there were some good guys to be around there and help you develop and in, in for all the other opportunities that have come your way in your coaching career. And I have to say, you know, I, I guess as an older guy, I don't really go put my, my heart into the fortunes of any kind of sports team. You know, I guess when you get a little bit older and you have family responsibilities and things like that, you know, uh, you know some of the, the, really some of these games, while they are wonderful, it's still a game. And, and I try not to get too involved in it now, but I must say, 1983, without a doubt, was the biggest disappointment in my life as a sports fan as the Cougars had the best basketball team in the nation, and they should have beaten NC State, but they didn't. And now I'm just thinking, here it is. It'll be exactly 40 years later, and the Final Four is in Houston. What do you think the Cougars' chances are with... A great coach like Kelvin Sampson to lead them and, and a great bunch of players. Oh, I, I love what Coach Sampson's done with the program. It just makes me so proud as an alumni seeing how we're doing and what we're doing. Just the mentality he has, the competitiveness, how those guys compete in battle. They are my pick for the national champion. I will be going to the Final Four this year. I'm hoping to wear my Cougar Red supporting them as we win a national championship. Oh, that would make me so happy. And In fact, here's another thing. Last year... I thought they had the team, but they just didn't play well against Villanova. My son, who's 20, he and I went to San Antonio, and we were on our way back, 
and all these sad Cougar fans uh, just so disappointed. You know, it just it the, it just was not the Cougars' day. And hats off to Villanova; they played great. But um, we stop at the Buckies, and Akeem comes into the Buckies, and Akeem said hello. Akeem took pictures, gave hugs with every single person who wanted to talk to him inside that Bucky's, and it turned a very sad day for Cougar fans into something that they will remember in a very positive way. And, uh, and we have a lot of high character, high class alumni who do that, who, who love the fans and great fans that come out and support him. I'm so excited to see what's going to happen this year with them. All right, that's Clark Eisenhower, head coach of Randall. You've done a great job. Thanks for visiting with us and uh, learning more about you. I, I'm sure we'll see you because you'll play against Marshall and yes, Kempner oh, and teams yes. like that. Yes, yes. And now Patrick Kinnick will take the mic back from you right. and bring the play-by-play -play of this second half of the girls' game. As thank the you Austin, much. thank you. The Austin Bulldogs are leading South Houston 39 to five, and in what I talked to Patrick about and called it basically a money game, which is sometimes you have someone who is a designated opponent comes into your venue of whether it's stadium or arena, and uh, they end up getting beaten pretty badly. It's a, well. called a money game because the the losing team usually gets a big check. Right. But that's not involved in this game. Well, it starts off the second half the way the first half started as uh, DK runs in for a layup, and it's 41-5. to five. The Lady Dogs in comfortable command of this ball game. Good pressure defense, even though they're in the half court. South Houston trying to go to the baseline. That is Fields, and she ran into a couple of well, Lady Dog defenders. She ran into three. It was a triple yeah. team, and, and they were doing such a good job. You know she has open teammates. We have a timeout early here. Hey, it's you know what we need to do? We need yes. to take a commercial break. Let's do that. All right, we'll be back. 41-5, to 5, Austin leads South Houston. This is VipeFortBend.com. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc. Doc. Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Ow to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUC. APP to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, 
With the hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. All right. Hope you didn't mind that we took an extra long commercial break, but we did owe our sponsors some spots. And now back to Boy, Patrick. You, you come back with a beautiful reverse layup by Sturdivant. She took it from the left side and wrapped her arm around to the right side and put it home. 48 to 5 is the score. Lady Dogs. A good way to end the, the, uh, the year 2022 with a solid basketball game. We have a timeout again here. Roger, uh, before you leave, we'll take a short break. 48 to 5, Lady Dogs. Hey, Fort Bend County fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Nevo Insurance Agency. Bradley is my insurance man. He can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every year on your car insurance, home insurance, or flood insurance, or all three like he did for me. And Bradley, you are as Fort Bend County as they come, right? That's right. Fourth generation here in the Needville area in Fort Bend County, uh, taking care of folks over here for over 100 years here in uh, Fort Bend County. You can give him a call, you can go online, or he'll even come see you at the Needville Insurance Agency. Give him the number, Bradley. 979-793-7411. We're back at uh, Austin High School Gymnasium, the doghouse, with the Lady Dogs in high command of this ballgame. 48-5 to five is the score they lead. Sturdivant trying that reverse shot again. This time it went over the back basket. But Jackson was able to come up with the rebound. Dixon has it. Youssef swinging around to Sturdivant. Down low to DK. And she lays it in. That is her 14th point of the ball game. Great balance scoring for the uh, Lady Dogs as well. I'll get to that when I get a chance. As the South Houston Lady Trojans have a hard time with the pressure of the Lady Dogs, stolen and stolen back by the Lady Trojans. Here comes Scott, Madison Scott with the ball. Swinging around down low now, a little hook shot from Bennett, no good, almost got in there for her. Couldn't quite get it in, and the Lady Dogs come down with it, Sturdivant has it. And she'll walk the ball up the floor with four and a half to play here in the third quarter. Only thing in doubt now is the final score. 50 to five is the score and the Lady Dogs just doing their best they can to play good solid ball and not overdo it, so to speak. Here's Yusuf, stops at the top of the key, down to Sturdivant. Sturdivant, nice, beautiful pass to Dixon who lays it in and now she has 13. 52 to five. Scott had the pass go out of bounds. She was pressured heavily there by, looked like Dixon, and her pass was errant and out of bounds. The starters are still in for the Lady Dogs. I have a feeling the fourth quarter will be different. Get them some action here in the third quarter and then probably sit them in the fourth, or at least some of them. Here's Sturdivant. They only have eight players. So it's hard to put the whole starting five. You can't put them all on the bench. Sturdivant to Jackson, who's away out on top. Dixon swings it around to DK, who drives the lane. Looked like she was fouled, no call. Jackson with a rebound. Yusuf thought about a three, and then down to DK, who has a nice pass off to Jackson, misses. DK gets it back, puts it up off the rim, but she's fouled. Jumping on that trampoline for all those rebounds. DK will go to the free throw line for two. Here's your scoring totals up to the point we're at right now. Sturdivant for the Lady Dogs has 12. As DK shoots the first free throw in and out. 
Uh, Yusuf has three, a three-pointer. She's tried a few others and unfortunately for her have gone out, not hitting the shots quite like she'd like to. Here's the next free throw, it's no good. Rebound out of South Houston. Dixon has 13 and a foul is gonna be called. Nope, traveling, traveling on South Houston. So Dixon has 13. DK has, let's see, 14. And Jackson has 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yes, so that's really good balance. 10, 13, 14, 10 again, and then a, a 3. But that's pretty solid balance. Can't focus on any one player. 52 to 5 is the score. The Austin Lady Dogs lead. DK drives the lane, puts it up, and no good. But she's fouled again, and she'll go to the free throw line for two more. She was just there moments ago, and she was unable to get those two free throws, and she's going to try to right the ship here on this attempt, but she's short on the first one. These are the kind of games you... You focus on some of the things you really want to improve on, and you want to be a good free throw shooter. And there she got that one. Didn't get too discouraged, and she pounded that last one in there. 53 to five is the score. Lots of pressure by Dixon. And they steal it again. Good pass to DK. She's gonna lay it up and in. Good job by Dixon to make the steal and then get the pass off and now all of a sudden DK has 17 in the ball game to lead all scorers. South Houston with the ball, that's Fields. And number 22 of the game, Sanchez. Nice pass to number three, that's Scott who missed a shot but the rebound came down to Ramirez. She passed it off to Scott again, but it was knocked out of bounds off of the Lady Dogs. 2.08 to play here in the ball game, or excuse me, in the third quarter. And a fresh set of troops coming in for the Lady Trojans. Five new players. Tally has it to Ramos. Wood on top dribbling, looking for somewhere to go. Right side she goes. Baseline cut off by Sudervant. Pass to Bennett, she lost it, retrieved it near half court. Ramos, back to Bennett, good move. She puts up a shot from about 10 feet, no good. Rebound comes out of the Lady Trojans, a nice shot by Leonard, Joy Leonard. Lays in the, the rebound shot, 55 to seven now. Sturdivant, left side off the bracket from about 10. Rebound fought for, out of bounds. It's gonna be Bulldogs ball with a minute and a half to play here in the third quarter. And checking back into the ball game is Jackson and uh, DK steps out. Inbounds underneath their own basket. Lady Bulldogs. Dixon has it, hands it off to Sturdivant. Around she goes, beautiful pass to Jackson who fumbled it but then got it back to Yousef. Dixon down to Jackson. Looked like she might have walked. No call. Shot attempt is no good. Ball deflected out of bounds, and it'll be South Houston's ball. Pretty good ball movement again by the Lady Dogs. They have shown excellent passing, and you, they really work together as a team. And when you're 20 and 1, that is going to be pretty evident. Here is Ramos now. Good pass. Shot attempt no good from, looked like uh, Tally. It was partially blocked. Sturdivant down to Florida Dixon. Good pass to Jackson who lays it up and no good off the right block. The ball's saved and the Lady Trojans come down to floor. Nice move by Agege. She dribbled it down to floor, made a little jump stop, let the defense go by her and she laid it in. And Coming back down is Dixon with a nice move and a left hand or a left left sided layup. I think she used her right hand, but it was a good move for another basket for Dixon. Shot attempt left side, no good from Tally. Rebound comes down to Dixon for the Lady Dogs. All the way to left side, left handed layup, no good, but she's fouled. 
And she'll go to the free throw line for her first free throw attempts of the afternoon. 9.9 .9 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Uh, by the way, Patrick, uh, I've been away from the table a few minutes just but doing a couple of important things. And one of them is uh, determining that the concession stand is not open. So if folks are at home listening to the girls' game, but they're going to come to the boys' game later, just know that you need to uh, either eat something while at home, on the way to the game, or sneak some food in. Whoa. Here's a second free throw. Good. Dixon makes them both. And now her point total is, looks like she's got 17 as well. It's five seconds to play, third quarter. We have a foul called, who is it on? An illegal pick, I believe, on Bennett there. And as we mentioned in yesterday's game, Bennett now has something in common with Jerry Seinfeld, who once got in trouble for an illegal pick. Yeah, the shot attempt, not quite in as um, Sakura tried to beat the buzzer, but after three quarters of play, it's 59 to nine. Lady Dogs. All right, so I think the Lady Dogs are in control. We'll take a break on fightfortbend.com. Remember, this is a doubleheader. We'll have the boys game between the Bulldogs and Richmond Randall, the Lions, the brand new team when we return. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc. Doc. Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, Patrick, go ahead. It's 59 to nine. Lady Trojans shot attempt is no good. Playing out the string here in the fourth quarter. Sturdevant has the ball for the Lady Bulldogs. Right side, up the right sideline. Gets a pick from uh, Segura. Now Jackson has it, swinging around to Thatch. Segura, and Dixon has it now. Right side, nobody on her. She takes it all the way to the basket for another layup. She has 19 points now in the ball game, leading all scorers. 61 to nine. Lady Dogs. Ramos has it stolen away from her by Sturdevant. She's gonna take it all the way to the right side for a right-handed layup, and she puts it in. 14 points for her now. So they had 59 points after three quarters, so you think they're probably on a pace to score 80. Pretty impressive when it's a 32-minute game. I was noting uh, a little earlier, Roger, the, the unbelievable balanced scoring they have for the, for the dogs. They have four girls well into double figures. This is one of those games where they can name the score and they can name who scores. Really, it's yeah. it's kind of that much of a mismatch. So 63 to 9, we'll take a quick break and be back on bitefortben.com.
First Tyron Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tyron Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Back at the doghouse, Austin High School, Roger Smith and Patrick Kinnick bringing you the action for the Lady Dogs who lead 63 to 9. And it's a doubleheader today. I was just going to say, don't don't be uh, leaving us early here because Roger's going to have the play-by-play -play for the Bulldog boys team playing Lamar Randall. A new school here uh, open. I guess it's not too far from George Ranch. Yes, and I will freely admit I haven't been to the Randall campus yet. Here's uh, Sturdivant up the front court. That has it, left side, misses her shot from about 15, but almost had it. Here's Yusuf for three. She is short on it. Rebound comes down to Scott, Madison Scott for South Houston. She's gonna, looked like she was gonna stop, pop a three, but she decided not to. Teammate has it from about 18 feet out, no good. Got her own rebound, back up, no good. And that player is Fields. She shot it, got her own rebound, shot it again, and. Unfortunately for her, was unable to score, but good hustle. One thing about the South Houston Lady Trojans, they really hustle out there, and they're not quitting. It's obvious who has the better team, but they are not discouraged to the point where they're not trying hard, which is a, a good characteristic. And the Bulldogs, the Lady Bulldogs, are doing a little weave action handing it a ball off to each other near the three-point line. Now Jackson posts up on the right block and gets the pass from Sturdivant, and Jackson now has 12. I have a feeling they're going to break 80 because, uh, you know, they're not even to the halfway point of the third quarter, and they're at 65 yeah, now. You, you almost have to do a stall tactic not to get to 80. And they're going to come get you like that. Yeah, Sturdivant is still putting pressure on the point up there. South Houston having a hard time moving the ball. The ball's been deflected and Segura comes up with it. Tosses it down to Jackson and it was mishandled and knocked out of bounds and I believe it's South Houston's ball. One of the things you fear about games like this, obviously you don't want to get any injuries, but then the other thing is you start pulling back on your effort. You don't want to, but it's kind of natural. Yes, that, that is true. And then sometimes strange things can happen because of that. And here's Sturdivant, though, though. She's going down in there, tying up the player for uh, South Houston. It'll be South Houston ball. You know, and what I see some of the teenagers wearing, boys and girls, especially in ball games, that we never did in our time, they have two shoes, and each one is a different color. I think they buy them that way, don't they? I, I think I so. I don't know. It's Manufacturers have made them that way. Well, they anything to work on making a few bucks, right? Maybe we should do something like that, Roger. What could we do? If we can think of something that people will pay for, then we should market it, you know, make those things and sell them. It's easy. It's easy as pie, right? Well, it, there are some just really duh ideas that have really paid off. Here's Sturdivant with a nice steal, and she takes it in for a layup. 67-9, and pressure in the backcourt. I'm not sure what happened there. They got a... Sturdivant almost stole the inbounds pass after she scored a basket. And uh, she's getting some <laughs> interesting cheers from the bench. I believe that's, I'm trying to think who that, I think that was uh, DK who was giving her the, the business from the bench there. It was a held ball, and, and so the possession arrow favored South Houston. And they have the ball now in the front court. Left hand dribble to the baseline and now deflected. 
Fields took it all the way down to the baseline and then tried to get it back out to uh, Agege, and it was deflected out of bounds. Here they are now in the front court baseline. Fields has it. Agege, no, that's not her. Nice penetration by Sanchez. Got her own rebound. Put it back up, no good, and the rebound comes down to Yusuf. Dixon in the game. She'll manage the point. She's going to dribble all the way to the free throw line and dish it back out to Yusuf. Dixon penetrates right side, cut off. Now Yusuf thought about a three, but got it back to Dixon instead. DK on the lower block with some pressure, and she got it back out. Yusuf pivoting now and looking for a teammate, and Dixon comes to help. Taking their time, Roger which is not a bad idea here. I think that's what Coach Dickerson wants. Just yep. you know, keep the score from getting totally out of hand. And work on your ball handling and your control of your offense as South Houston comes down, layup and in from Bennett. As uh, Agege a, a was having a little bit of trouble with the possession, but she saved it right to Bennett, who laid it in. Here's DK from the right block, overlaid, got her own rebound, put it back up, and that one rolled in for her. And she has 19 points now, 69 to 11. Don't forget now we'll have game two. As we mentioned just moments ago, Austin boys versus the Randall team from Lamar. They're the Lions. The Lions. Randall Lions. Here's a nice little penetration move. Shot was no good for Fields, but Bennett fought for the rebound and she was able to tip it to a teammate. Fields for South Houston, still fighting hard. Looking for a shot. Gets it to a teammate, that is Ramirez. Ramirez down to Bennett. Bennett fighting for it, and it is deflected away from her, and Thatch comes down with it for the Lady Dogs, and then she's sort of nudged out of bounds, and a foul against Ramirez. With a minute and a half to play here in the ball game. I thought of something that we can talk about between games, you know, when when you're not checking on uh, who the Randall starters are. <laughs> that was a little, that was a, if you don't know, that was a little, uh, on Roger's part, a subtle reminder that I have some work to do. Here's a shot from. Uh, well, I'll be doing a live interview with Christopher O'War. Nice Bulldogs. shot from Thatch on the left side. and She's on the board. Sorry, Miss Thatch. I talked during your, your three ball, your moment of glory. Here come this South Houston Lady Trojans with a shot from the right side, almost in, but just off. And now a foul on the rebound as uh, Segura had it and was being uh, pecked at by some of the Lady Tra Trojans. And what were you saying, Roger? You well, I want to save this uh, for between games, you know, when or maybe even halftime of the boys' game. But uh, just toward the idea of figuring out how to make money with an idea oh. and something so maybe, that uh, maybe today's our day. It's not really that I don't have a new idea. I'm just going to take my hat off to a guy who came up with a ridiculous idea that oh, darn. has made him a lot of money. I thought we were going to have the big idea of the century here. And uh, that was one of those plays that uh, Sturdivant was trying to save it she had the ball, well, she saved the ball, and then her feet were out of bounds when the ball was in bounds, and then she came in bounds and was the first to touch it, and she can't do that. I don't know if I described there very well, but turnover goes to Well, I, I South guess Houston. I didn't realize that. I thought if she reestablished herself in bounds, it would be okay to touch the ball. I, don't, I thought you couldn't be the first to touch it. Oh, another five-second call. You know, maybe uh, if uh, somebody calls a timeout, one of these officials could come over and answer our question. Yeah, maybe that'll be something we could discuss here between games. But I feel Won't I take very long, they though. want out of here. <laughs> yeah. Will they be the same refs for the second game or not? Doubt it. They usually don't do that, huh? Usually not. Okay, well, then they will maybe we'll have to ask the next guy or the next lady. Here's a shot from Dixon from three-point land, and she drains it. She has 22 points in the ball game. 74 to 11. I don't think they're going to get to 80, but I think it was out of kindness. Although Segura steals it. Left hand layup. 
good. That's the loudest cheer of the game. Her Everybody's happy like for her. her. Her teammates like her. Wow. She's obviously very popular. And what an ovation on that play. Here's a shot off the top of the backboard. We're down to one second, and there's a buzzer. They're going to count it for Bennett. How about that? Well, the Lady Dogs are now 21 and 1 with a with a rousing 76 to 13 victory over South Houston. The Lady Trojans fought valiantly but were overmatched from the beginning. Roger, your closing thoughts on this game perhaps. Well, um, the fact that the Lady Bulldogs have a loss in the loss column, it's not a district game. So they remain undefeated in District 26A and the way it works in basketball, the girls always start, well, I don't know if that they necessarily start their district games exactly one week sooner than the boys do, but they are going to finish their regular season one week earlier, and that's why you have the girls at San Antonio for their state championship tournament one week before the boys go into that same building, the Alamo Dome, and play off uh, all the games that will determine their champion so uh, in other words what I'm saying is Austin is almost through the first go round of district games you know the the boys still have not finished that first go round and, and the girls I think in some districts they have probably played half of their district games so the Austin Lady Bulldogs were the favorite coming into the season to win district 26a and I think they're a pretty good bet to go ahead and follow through on that but of course they have competitors who say, well, let's just see about that. And I know they're going to have some competitive games as they try to get the district championship. Oh, by the way, listen to this announcement. Let me turn it up. Okay, that was Kristen Goodman. She is the volleyball coach here at Austin. And... Uh, She's just delightful, always with a smile, and uh, saw her team almost uh, take a couple of games off of Ridge Point in this gym. I guess that was back in uh, October, maybe. Could have been early November. 